Hi everyone, Shallow Glitch here. Last video I showed you how to make a simple 2D character controller which can move left, right and jump. This video I'll be showing you how to make three of the most popular jump variations which are used in most platformers. These jump variations can help make your jumping become a lot more dynamic and are great fun to use. By the end of this video you should have a player character whose jump height will be determined by how long you hold the button, who can jump while in midair, and who can charge up for a super jump. Before we get onto that however, I want to correct a mistake I made in my last video. Some of you may have noticed that if you hold the left or right arrow keys against the side of the platforms, the player will get stuck until you let go, which isn't what we want. To fix this, let's start by right clicking in our assets folder and create a new physics material 2D and give it a name like player. Then in the inspector of the new material we want to change the friction to zero. Finally on the rigid body 2D component of our player character you'll notice this empty material slot which we can drag our new physics material 2D into. Hit play and now the player shouldn't get stuck when you hold the left or right arrow keys against the platforms. Brilliant. Now that that's fixed, we can move on to the jumping portion of the video. The first jump which I'll be demonstrating involves the character going up higher into the air the longer the player holds the jump button. This jump is common in 2D platformers as it makes the player feel like they are in complete control of the character as it makes it feel like they have weight. Not like how our character currently jumps, where the jump height is always the same. Let's start by heading into our player script and create three new variables a private float variable called jump time counter, a serialized private float variable called jump time, and a private bool variable called is jumping. In our update function, when the player presses space and is grounded equals true, we want to set is jumping to true and make our jump time counter equal to our jump time variable. Then beneath that, let's create another is statement with the conditions of input.getKey keycode.space and is jumping is equal to true. Make sure you typed input.getKey and not input.getKey down. The difference is that input.getKey down only detects when the key has been pressed down once, while input.getKey will detect if the key is being held down. Then in this if statement, let's make another with the condition of if jump time counter is greater than zero. Let's copy our rb.velocity equals vector 2 dot up times jump force code and paste it into our latest if statement. Below that, let's type jump time counter minus equals time dot delta time. This will decrease our jump time counter value while the space key is being held. However, if these conditions haven't been met yet, make an else statement where is jumping is equal to false. Finally, let's make another if statement with the condition of input.getKeyUp keycode.space. This will detect when the player lets go of the space key. And in it, let's set is jumping equal to false. Let's save our script and head back into Unity. Make sure to give your new variables some values. You'll most likely need to tweak your variables and even change the gravity scale or mass on the player's rigid body 2D to get a jump which feels right for you. Now our character's jump height should be determined depending how long the player holds down the jump button. Now it's time to show you how we can get our character to jump again while in midair, or commonly known as the double jump. This is one of the most basic jump variations that exist and is such fun to play around with whenever it's available. Before we start however, our game scene is getting quite cramped, so let's first start by widening our camera view and making some more platforms that our character can jump on. Once that's done, let's head back into our script where we will make three new variables. A private int variable called extra jumps, a serialized field private int variable called extra jump value, and a serialized field private float variable called extra jump force. Then below our flip function, let's make a new function called extra jump. In our new function, let's make an if statement with the conditions of input.getKey down keycode.space extra jumps are greater than zero, and is grounded is equal to false. In our new if statement, let's copy and paste our rb.velocity equals vector2 dot up times jump force code, but instead of multiplying it by jump force, we'll multiply it by extra jump force. 
Then below that, type extra jumps minus minus. This will reduce the value of our extra jumps variable by one. Then else if our conditions are input.getKeyDown, keycode.space, extra jumps equals zero and is grounded equals true, let's paste our rb.velocity vector2.up times jump force code again. Finally, let's have a separate if statement with the condition of is grounded equals true where we'll set our extra jumps variable equal to our extra jump value variable. In our update function, make sure that you call the extra jump function you just made, otherwise none of this will work. Save the script and head back into Unity. Let's give our new variable some kind of value, then hit play. You should now have a player that is capable of double jumping. Great. Keep in mind, if you want your player to jump more than once in midair, you can change your extra jump value to equal 2, 3, 4, even 10. For now, let's just leave it at 1. Now it's time to show our final jump variation of the video, the charge jump. This jump often involves the player holding down a button to charge up over a period of time. Then, when they release the button, it flings the character into the air. Let's head back into our script and create four new variables. A serialized private float variable called charge jump force, a serialized private float variable called charge jump speed, a serialized private float variable called charge jump time, and a private bool variable called is charging jump. Below our extra jump function, let's make a new function called charge jump. In this new function, let's make an if statement with the conditions of input.getKey, keycode.downarrow. This will check if the player is holding down the down arrow key, if charge jump time is less than 5, and if is grounded is equal to true. If all these conditions have been met, we want to set our is charging jump boolean to true. Then, if is charging jump is equal to true, we want charge jump time plus equal time dot delta time multiplied by our charge jump speed. This will increase our charge jump time over time, depending how fast we set our charge jump speed variable. Else if our conditions are input dot get key up key code dot down arrow, this will check when the player lets go of the down arrow key. And if charge jump time is greater than or equal to 5, Grab our rb.velocity equals vector2.up code, but instead of multiplying it by jump force or extra jump force, let's multiply it by charge jump force. We also want to set is charging jump equal to false and charge jump time equal to zero. Make sure to call the charge jump function in our update function. Save the script and head back into Unity. Give the charge jump force and charge jump speed variables some kind of value and hit play. You should now be able to hold the down arrow key and super jump into the air when you let go. However, you may notice that our charge jump time variable does not reset if we let go of the down arrow too early. This can sometimes lead to us charging our super jump much quicker than intended. So let's head back into our script and make a new if statement in our charge jump function with the condition of input.getKeyDown, keycode.downarrow, which will make our charge jump time variable equal to zero. Save the script and head back into Unity. Hit play, and now when we hold down the down arrow key, it will reset our charge jump time variable so we no longer need to worry about charging too quickly. Your character should now be capable of performing three different jump variations. Congratulations! If you want to see more of my content, be sure to drop a like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. To further support me, consider checking out my Buy Me A Coffee page to become a member or just leave a one-time donation. Every little helps. Thanks for watching.